Hello everyone, it's the Metal Geek. How y'all doing? Now as a lot of you know, I'm a game collector. I like to collect a lot of games, retro and new. And I'm a big fan of collecting clone consoles as well as plug and plays. Now of course I do get questions where people are like, Hey Metal Geek, you collect games? You must have a lot of rare games. Well, yeah, I do actually have a few rare games, but let me be clear about something. While I do own some rare games, let me be clear with the fact that I don't go out actively seeking rare games. In other words, I don't go out there looking for rare expensive games and purchasing them for a high price. Pretty much all the rare games that I own these days are games that I actually purchased when they originally released. It just so happens that I like the few games that were going to eventually become rare. So I decided to start a new segment here, a little side project to my Retro Underground. And that is to talk about some of the rare games that I own. And today I would like to actually start with what became one of the most popular stories in video game history. It's the People vs. Nintendo. Some of you may remember that a few years back, Nintendo was actually refusing to release several games on the Wii. Now this was at the end of the Wii's life cycle, it was the last year that the Wii would really be out before the Wii U launched. And those games consisted of Xenoblade Chronicles, Pandora's Tower, and The Last Story. But this group that would become known as Operation Rainfall started a campaign to convince Nintendo that these games were not only wanted, but were absolutely desired by the American audience. It took a little while, but eventually, well, we actually got those games. We got Xenoblade, we got Pandora's Tower, and we got The Last Story. Now, if you were to ask a lot of people which game they thought was the rarest of all three of those games, most would probably answer Xenoblade Chronicles, which to be honest with you, for a time, that was actually very true. It was a very limited run, and it was also only available through GameStop and Nintendo.com's website. So generally, after the first couple of prints of Xenoblade Chronicles, it was impossible to find that game, and it was going up on Amazon for hundreds of dollars. $150, $200, it was crazy! But then... Nintendo did the unthinkable, and they re-released Xenoblade Chronicles as a port to the 3DS XL. Well, to be more specific, the new 3DS XL, as it does require the new controls on that machine to actually play. Needless to say, the value of the Wii copy of Xenoblade Chronicles significantly dropped. You can now buy the game new, in package from Amazon Prime, for less than what it originally sold for when it came out and it was exclusive to GameStop. But there are a few third party sellers who are still trying to sell this game used for like 80 or 90 dollars. Guys get real, the value of the game has dropped. It's a great game, but you should not be getting more than about 20 to 30 dollars for a used copy of this game. Now with that said, we're going to move on to Pandora's Tower. Now Pandora's Tower never really was that super expensive to begin with. And even though there weren't that many copies of the game produced, it never really reached that rare status where it became extremely sought after and very expensive. Now don't get me wrong, not every rare game is expensive and not every expensive game is rare. But this is just one of those real interesting cases where even though the game isn't super common, it still isn't that that expensive to buy. You can still get it for about 30 to 35 dollars. Surprisingly enough, the game that actually right now is worth the most, the rarest of all of them, is this game right here. The last story. Now don't get me wrong, you could actually get the very basic standard edition of this game just in this package alone for maybe about 30 to 35 dollars it's not that expensive but this is what i'm talking about right here take a look that's right this is the special edition now let me be a little clear about this the special edition was only sold as a pre-sale at GameStop. 
it came with a special cover, basically this one right here. Basically, it's just like a little flip open thing and it opens up like a book. If you actually kind of look at the side of this, it looks like a book and it actually flips open and the game goes in there and the instruction manual and so on and so forth. You then got this inside of it, which is an art gallery book, which is awesome. It's just, it's the art of the game. It really looks good. It, it, it's a really good companion piece to the game. Of course, you also get the game itself, which of course you would want the game. And inside the box, let me just open this up here. You got the game disc and you got the instruction manual. Now what you see here is basically the collector's edition and this whole thing right here sells for about $100. I've seen it go for about $100. But mine is actually just a little bit more special because it actually includes something that you don't often see sold with this whole set here. Can this set sells for about $100? Okay, but you see, here's the thing. When GameStop actually pre-sold this set, you could actually get, and it was only while supplies lasted, this right here. This is the CD soundtrack of the last story, and it was only available, as far as I know, at GameStop when you pre-ordered this. And if you actually picked up your pre-order late, there was no guarantee you would get this because they didn't necessarily send out enough copies of the CD to fulfill the pre-orders of the game itself. So not everybody got a copy of this. This is an actual complete copy of the last story yes it's not in package it's opened it's been played the disc is actually in perfect condition there's no wear and tear on the box the art book is still in great condition the cd case is a little bit worn around the edges but for the most part i have not seen a lot of sales of this game with this cd and that means when you buy this set without this you're actually not getting the complete set so if you could get this right here these for a hundred dollars i i mean i'm just kind of taking a guess i haven't really seen it but i'm kind of thinking that with this here this would probably sell for about 130 maybe to about 150 dollars because it is a complete set with the pre-order cd again not everybody got that cd a lot of people got this for the pre-order but not everybody got the cd so interestingly enough while Xenoblade seemed to be the one destined to become the rarest of all these games, games that I like to call the Operation Rainfall Trilogy, it turns out that the last story is actually just a little bit more rare. So this is probably one of the rarest Wii games that I own. Next time we're going to take a look at perhaps PlayStation games. Until then guys, this is the Metal Geek saying, have a great one guys.